All right, so we're talking about Available to Promise, also known as ATP. Um, this will be pretty short, uh, only 83 slides. So <laughs> Available to Available, sorry, so only three slides. Available to Promise, uh, you may or may not have seen it in your, uh, in your SAP uh, functionality. It's not really in a menu item. There's ways to get about it. But uh, Available to Promise really just uh, answers the question, you know, can I get this green widget next Friday? And what it does, it's really a check on the item, quantity, warehouse, and date combinations. And it's not really the same as uh, an availability check that you see everywhere, because availability check is really uh, a, a straightforward calculation of on hand, uh, meaning what's in stock in all your warehouses, what's on order <clears throat> through purchases or uh, through production, and what's committed uh, through the sales orders typically, and also what's uh, committed through production orders uh, for your components. And whatever a widget is, I have no idea. That's just what everybody uses. So what's the data source for, avail for available a promise? It's, uh, it looks at all the existing documents, basically. Um, <clears throat> it looks at all the rows within your documents. Uh, so purchases, sales orders, what's, what's uh, the delivery date at the row level? Uh, and I'm saying this at the row, not the header, because your header may have a, a due date, but you might have updated individual rows with different delivery dates. So it's really important that you, uh, you get that. And it also in includes inventory transfer. So if you have an uh, inventory transfer uh, request coming here and there, then uh, it'll show up also as part of the availability, uh, availability promise check. And how do you find ATP? There's three ways that I know of. Uh, one is, and I'll show these three right away. One is the item master. Just basically open up your item master data. Right click anywhere on the, uh, on the screen and then you'll see an option. Uh, at the document row level, uh, you can just right click on the item itself and also an inventory status report. And there's two ways to run that report. There's a, I'll show you the drop down. You can run it on availability check as we discussed earlier or as available to promise check. You know, both of them are available there. So let's take a look at uh, SAP. So I spent uh, three months preparing this demo. So this ATP item I created uh, just yesterday, sorry. Uh, you open up an item master and you can see that the available is uh, 22 for this. But if we right click on it and we see a available to promise option, that's going to take those 22. It's going to show it in, uh, you know, in a grid with date sequences. And this is really important when you're a customer service rep and you're on the phone and the customer says, can I have these widgets by next Friday? And if you're looking at the item master, you might say, you know, I got lots available. But when you look at the uh, date sequence, you might have uh, a little bit of trouble. So when I right clicked and I got the available to promise, it showed me I have in stock four, I have a sales order for two that's due today, and I have a purchase order for 22 that's coming in way out in October. So if I was to look at this here and say, you know what, I've got, uh, I, I can probably give these to you. If you want 10 of them, I can give them to you right now or, or, or in the next few days. That's, uh, that's kind of a, a mistake because when you look at this grid, you're really not getting those 20 until uh, a few months from now. All right, There's just a little checkbox down here, by the way, just if you want to see something beyond the item's lead time, I think I've got 60 days on this item or something like that. And if I uncheck it, I, I don't see my purchase order because that's beyond my lead time. So just another way of looking at things. I prefer to leave this on at all times. So again, that's the first way of checking the item master's availability. The other way I mentioned is if you're doing a sales order, let's do sales order for maxi check. And I'm gonna put the item number in there. And again, this will work for any document. So if you have a sales order, a purchase order, anything you're creating, just right click on it and same same screen will come up. Oh, I got, uh, I, I'm below my minimum quantity, so I'm gonna get that window. And there's my availability, available to promise. Same screen, nothing different, just a, a different source. And the other one that probably is gonna be new to some of you 
is a, uh, sorry, wrong module, inventory status report. Uh, all right, so you got the op open status item status report. I have an ATP item right in here. All right, so right now if I double click it, I'm just gonna get for that particular item, the inventory status reports, so there's a uh, order and a purchase order coming in. Doesn't really tell me a lot, but over here there's a normal and available to promise option. If you just select that and then double click on your item, presto, you got your um, available to promise window just like we had before. All right. Uh, one thing I did maybe forget to mention, excuse me, is when I do the availability, available to promise uh, on this screen here, um, I have the option here of checking uh, particular warehouses or all. So you can do one warehouse at a time and see what's available. So I have in my in my particular bin warehouse, I have only one one available, but no sales orders. Um, general warehouse, I might have my in stock of two, sales order and a purchase order existing, as we saw earlier. This is something you might want to check also as you're doing this. When you see all, it's it's all like all warehouses combined. And if you're on the phone with a customer, it gives you a, a, a way of looking at, you know, what should I do? What should I transfer? And then of course, when you come back here, you can see the end stock. So if somebody's looking for one and you don't have it, well, maybe you can transfer it from another warehouse. Okay. Um, that's really it for available of promise. It's pretty simple um, functionality and it just exists in the three locations. So I'm done. Any questions? <laughs> Uh, well, we wait for other people to ask questions. In that inventory uh, status, like available to promise window, I noticed that form settings is available. Is there a lot of other things that you can actually see in this window or I was just curious about the form settings. So the easy way is to find out uh, on and that kind of question is easily answerable on any of these forms, any of these screens. You just click the form settings window and mm. if you see it, uh, you, can you, can, it. You, can, you can check it. If you don't see it, then the answer is obviously no. Okay. All right, and that's true for any uh, any window. So, you know, we look at the inventory status window, same thing. I've got units of measure required and so on that I don't have open on this particular window. But yes, I can select, uh, let's say, uh, you know, minimum inventory. I'll, I'll select all of them, okay? And then you can, you can expand that window. So um, just a valid answer for pretty well any window. Okay. Okay. I, I, you know, I, I also am a little bit curious about like in your experience, I guess, in working with available to promise with clients, is there sort of any common, you know, what would, if I could put you on the spot, what would some of the most common questions be or what, where would you sort of encounter limitations to so, sort of the basic functionality in available to promise? Yeah. So as you saw in the window, it's, um, First of all, I'm going to get get you back for this, Rob, because uh, you're not so safe yeah. to ask questions. Okay, so uh, <laughs> revenge will be sweet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as you saw that window, um, there's uh, what I like to do is I, I kind of promote that with MRP because MRP does a lot of the calculations for you in terms of determining what to buy and when, and sure. it uses it uses basically everything that you see in the ATP screen uh, and then some, right? And and the item master, we have some minimum order quantities, lead times, and so on. So it uses is all those functions, those those, uh, those bits of data, uh, to calculate what you you know what's recommended to purchase and buy on the ATP screen, it doesn't give you all that information, right? So it kind of gives you a, a from a customer service perspective, it gives you a, a, a one glance, say, well, you know, what can I do for this customer right now? And uh, it gives you that availability. So I like to say, if you're going to use the uh, the available the promise screen. I would also have the item master for that particular item open with the inventory tab. So mm. it kind of gives you a, a, a very quick glance as to what you can possibly do for your customer. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, I gather that really the user that, you know, you've said this a few times, Peter, the the users that are, are most interested in this function are the ones that are really sort of on the front lines processing orders with customers, right? Um, Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because the uh, the guys in the back who are planning all this tend to use other tools like the MRP, as I mentioned earlier, and they're planning uh, purchases and so on. Right. And they're not looking one item at a time. They're typically looking at the whole, you know, the whole inventory. 
So Peter, how how is this different than, because um, uh, I know that there are other right-click functions on the item master record, one mm -hmm. of them being available to promise, but yeah. sometimes I see other things like the yeah. inventory posting list. And sometimes I have a tough time understanding, well, what's the difference? Yeah, the the inventory, there's, a, there's two good ones on here that I use a lot, inventory posting. I typically use the inventory auto report. Uh, from a financial perspective, the audit, the audit report gives you uh, every all the ins and outs. Now, there's not going to be any much ins and outs on the on this particular item, but um, it gives you all the ins and outs uh, by date, by customer document, and so on, with costs associated. So the the valuation of the of the item, um, where the inventory posting list gives you slightly different look with. Uh, uh, sort of value sold as opposed to cost, inventory cost. All right, those are sort of the key differences, but they're maybe the two that I use all the time.